Hi, this is Miss Park. This video is called the Finding the Equation of the Perpendicular Bisector. So we're just going to talk about what is a perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to change color. Okay, so perpendicular bisector, the word perpendicular means it cuts something at 90 degrees. And bisector means it cuts in half. Okay, so a perpendicular bisector is a line that will go through a line segment um, and divide it in half. So it will go through the midpoint. And it will do that through, uh, through an angle of 90 degrees. So this is the perpendicular bisector of this line segment. Um, we don't talk about perpendicular bisector of a triangle. We talk about perpendicular bisector of a line segment or of the side of a triangle because if we were to draw a triangle and I was to draw the perpendicular bisector, let's say, of this base, then I would be finding the midpoint and then I would have a line that goes through it at 90 degrees, but that line doesn't go through the other, the opposite vertex of the triangle. So it doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't matter that it's a triangle or not. The point is that we are finding the perpendicular bisector of this line segment. Line segment ends on both on both ends. Okay, and that's different from a line. The perpendicular bisector is a line uh, that goes on forever on both sides. Okay, so this is the perpendicular bisector. It is also called the right bisector. So you may see that um, online or in textbooks. Okay, so the right bisector, perpendicular bisector, the same thing. So now we're going to draw, we're going to write the equation of the perpendicular bisector of this line segment. So quick review of how to write the equation of a line. The equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. We need a slope and we need the y-intercept. Right now we don't have either of them. So we're going to need to uh, use the information that we're given. Well, what is one thing we know? We know that the perpendicular bisector, which is yellow, is perpendicular to the line segment. And so we know about slopes of lines that are perpendicular. We know that their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So if I can find the slope of AB, I can use that to find the slope of my yellow line, my perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to use the formula for slope. And in this uh, in, in this analytic geometry work, anytime you use a formula, you must write the formula first before you put in the values. So I get two points AB. So my Y2 is a 2. My Y1 is a 6. My X2 is negative 1. My X1 is a 3. All right, so let's just recap. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Okay, and so now we can figure this out. This is negative 4. Negative 1 minus 3 is also negative 4. Oh, nice. My slope is 1. So therefore, the slope of the perpendicular is the negative reciprocal of 1. Uh, negative reciprocal means take your fraction, 1 over 1, flip it, take the reciprocal, turn it upside down, and change the sign. So the slope of my perpendicular is negative 1. So that's really good because for the perpendicular bisector, I now have a slope. I just need a point to plug in to figure out the B. Well, what point sits on the perpendicular bisector? All right, take a look. The only point we know is that midpoint. So we're going to need to find it. I need to find the midpoint. So we have a midpoint formula. Once again, I'm going to use a formula. Anytime you use a formula, you must write it first before putting in the values. Okay, so that's going to be 3 minus 1. So 3 plus negative 1, which is 3 minus 1 over 2. And 6 plus 2 over 2. Remember, we're just taking the average of the x's and the average of the y's. This is 2 over 2 and 8 over 2, which simplifies to 1, 4. Oops, sorry. 1, 1, 4. So look what I have. So therefore, I have a slope of uh, negative 1, and I have a point 1, 4. 
So in y equals mx plus b, I'm going to sub in my slope. And then I'm going to sub in this point. This is my x, this is my y. I know that I can put this point in because it's on the line, which means it makes the equation true. So if I put it into the equation, the left side and right side will still be equal. And now I have 4 equals negative 1 plus b. Add, negative, add 1 to both sides, I get 4 plus 1. And so b is equal to 5. And that's the end. So that is, therefore, um, y equals negative x. So I won't write negative 1, so hopefully you know that that's there. Plus 5 is the perpendicular bisector. And now we have the full solution. Okay, thank you for watching.